Hey everyone, Ms. Go Electric here, and today I'm really excited to bring to you another In Charged segment. Today we have a special guest. This is Scott Case, who is with Recurrent. He is the CEO and co-founder. Thanks for joining us today, Scott. Hi, it's fun to be here. Okay, so first and foremost, a lot of people might not know what Recurrent is, so can you just give us a, a background of what you guys are doing? Yeah, so I got into this space about two years ago because we realized that the used electric car market is, is going to be this huge and important market. And people were asking and still are asking questions about used buying used EVs that are just way different from used combustion engine cars. And it starts with the battery. People are like, how's the battery in that thing? Because they think of you know, their iPhone wearing down over time. And the answers that the industry had were like nothing, <laughs> not, not anything relevant to that. And so that was a problem we started to work on. It's like, how can we make it um, answer those questions easily for shoppers of used electric cars? Um, so just answering like, how's the battery? How far does it go? Uh, how does that change in different weather conditions? All those questions that we saw people asking and no one was answering. Our uh, paying customers are uh, car dealers, right? And so they pay us to provide those uh, basically condition reports on on their used cars. Um, but the other thing that those dealers are looking for uh, is they want to buy inventory from, and for them, it's like they want to buy used cars from current owners because then they can go and turn around and sell them. And uh, our dealers are all specialists, right, in electric cars. They really understand what to ask for. And really importantly, they understand that having certainty on the battery is worth a lot. And so uh, they, they'll pay a premium for knowing, you know, what's in what's going on in the battery. And, and that's, that's sort of what ends up helping current EV owners. So most people will think of deciding to buy a used vehicle and immediately like judge it because of the odometer reading of the vehicle, right? So uh, can you give us an idea of what are those data points that you're looking at as far as the battery health goes and how that is informing the people that you're working with? Because you have three different prospects, is that correct, that you that you work with? That's yeah. Thinking? Okay. So yeah. So um, classic thing when you buy a used car, right? You know, for your whole life, uh, your whole driving life is, you know, what's the odometer? Is this a high mileage or low mileage car? Did it get its oil changed every, you know, six months? Did it was it well taken care of in that in that sense? You know, maybe you kick the tires, and that's 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 the story, right? Um, and we're finding, I mean, the, the, you still want to be able to kick tires, but we're finding other than that is that obviously EVs don't have oil changes. And the second thing is like the odometer is not particularly correlated with how much is left in the battery, you know, so the equivalent of how long you can talk all day um, for your iPhone. So uh, we're trying to help people understand that, um, you know, like, well, this the the battery in this Tesla Model 3 that's four years old now, um, I you know, maybe the EPA range said 260 miles. And at this point, I'll get, uh, I can expect a range of 220 miles or 230 miles or something like that in ideal circumstances. And and here's how it differs when it gets really cold or really hot. So that's like kind of the, the, the as you put it, like there's three different use cases for this. The, the, the shopper, the used electric shopper is, is, is going to be the um, is going to be asking those questions. We're going to help them with. The second group is uh, car dealers. So car dealers don't know with used electric cars what they're what they're getting either. They don't know what to pay for cars when they're buying them at wholesale or or getting them on trade. And so we're helping them understand that so they can then turn around and set the right expectations with their uh, with 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 folks that are buying cars from them. And then the last thing is like. Uh, you know, the other important group is uh, uh, electric car owners who, you know, maybe bought their car new uh, and now they've had it for three or four or five years. And now they're thinking about, you know, maybe they're on a wait list for a Rivian or an F-150 Lightning, you know, one of the new cars that's coming out and, you know, thinking about, well, I'm going to sell this other car. And uh, they're entering into that that same used car ecosystem that, like kind of nobody knows, you know, what's your car worth? How's the battery in it? And and we're finding that by giving that information to the industry, that they can sell their cars for more. So um, so it, it really kind of helps the 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 current EV owner and those early adopters that are probably the ones who are watching your show. It helps them as well by putting extra money in their pocket when they sell. You guys, as a business, it seems like you've been growing pretty quickly. I noticed that you had 
quite a bit go on already for this year for new, uh, whether it be investors or programs or new clients that you're working with. So can you um, tell us, because I've also seen that there's like about 20 employees listed on your website. So um, what kind of stuff are you working on and uh, what has happened so far this year for you? Well, so <laughs> got a lot. So, so the twenty employees is basically like me plus a bunch of data scientists and and, and engineers. Like that's uh, that's our company. So, um, it's a really, uh, as you would imagine, super nerdy group of people that really like dig into battery data. Um, so, uh, and then and then me sort of like facing the market, right? Um, so, you know, big milestones for us this year. Um, we raised a, a a pretty big round of, of venture money to fuel the growth of the company. Um, we received uh, actually it was last year, but we did the work this year uh, a grant from the National Science Foundation to do some of our advanced analytics work and research. Um, over the next, uh, oh shoot, I'm going to be like breaking news accidentally here, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. So exclusive. Um, over the next week, we're going to be launching uh, what's called a range score, which is basically we're putting uh, we're putting actual numbers like a zero to a hundred number on used vehicles for sale. That's at a glance, like how far can this car go compared to when it was new? Um, and that's that's cool. that's sort of like going out through all of our dealers that we're working with already. And then, oh, do I want to break this last one? Do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, so we're, we'll be announcing next week, oh, marketing's going to be so mad at me. We'll be announcing next week a uh, partnership with BlackBook to help current EV owners get a battery specific valuation for their uh, car that they can then go and use to sell their car at a premium. Oh, cool. And next that, week, big week for us, like lots of things happening. And you are now the exclusive <laughs> for that. I like to hear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is awesome. And that's kind of like the main selling point for you to get people that's on the, because you provide a monthly report for people that sign up with you, right? So that's yeah. one of the big. Yeah, and th and that's a free product. So if you're a, if you are a current EV owner, you come to Recurrent Auto, and you can sign up uh, to get our monthly uh, battery report for free. And yeah, the the big value there it's a couple of things. One is that you know if you are maybe a newer EV owner and you don't know how to take care of your battery in a in a great way, you know you you grew up taking care of a combustion engine car, like learning from your parents or your grandparents, like you got to change the oil, you got to do this, that, and the other thing. No one has any rules of thumb about how to take care of an EV, and so we're helping people develop those about like good practice for taking care of your battery. Um, but the but the bigger payoff is the long-term thing is like you're tracking your battery for free over time in a, you know, with our service. And then we're going to help you sell it for more when you're ready to sell. Now, there has been a lot going on lately. Buzz initially over the last year or so about a new EV tax credit. But finally, we have something that has passed the Inflation Reduction Act. And there's a lot going on. It's honestly, it's very intimidating to read through all of it because there are a lot of requirements and I'm sure you guys have some experience with looking into it because there is a used EV uh, benefit here. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about how you see the Inflation Reduction Act affecting the used EV market and specifically like the costs of the replacement battery packs? And then we'll talk a little bit more about like the requirements. Okay, so what's wild about yeah the, the the Inflation Reduction Act and all the EV tax credits are like there's a lot in there. What I find really funny is like for every piece of uh, journalism about about the EV tax credit, there's like 500 words on the new credits and then like one sentence on the used credit. You know, it's just like oh by the way, there's a four thousand dollar credit. My opinion, the reality of what I think is, is going to happen is that used tax credit is actually going to be a bigger deal than the new tax credit in the long run. Um, so, uh, because you know, the chief reason is because there's a, a the used car market is twice the size of the new car market. You know, over twice the size in terms of volume, and so that is a it is a much bigger opportunity over the next ten years to make uh, used electric vehicles affordable for more people. And bring it so it's not just something that rich people, you know, drive around their fancy Teslas, uh, you know, all the time. So um, uh, big kind of pieces to know about the used tax credit. So first of all, like 
unlike the new tax credit, there's no requirements for where the battery was made, where the car, you know, the, where the materials were mined from, where the car was assembled. None of that, all of that's specific to the new EV tax credit. So you don't have to worry about that. The big things with the used tax credit are uh, when the vehicle first transacts uh, on the used market for under $25,000, and sold to a qualifying buyer, uh, it is it's uh, eligible for a one-time four thousand dollars tax credit, up to four thousand dollars, I should say. But the interesting thing is, like, then you get in all these like weird little edge cases of the rules. Uh, first, every car can get it only once, right? And so, if you're looking at a used car that's been sold once or twice already, like, you need to make sure that VIN that that vehicle hasn't already uh, been subject to the credit. That's like one interesting thing. Um, two is, uh, this definition of a qualified buyer, like it's only an individual, it can't be a business or a fleet or anything like that, getting this credit. And, uh, you can't do it m more than every three years, basically, which is not, not too reasonable. The car has to be at least two model years old. This is like all these other things. And then there's an income qualification as well. So a household income maximum $150,000 gross income down to, a, um, an individual $75,000. So this really is aimed at, you know, middle-class, uh, folks that are, you know, I think that are the, the used EV market is really just sort of like emerging for that group of, um, and uh, and I think it, it's something that can really accelerate in uh, the, the adoption in, in a pretty equitable way. I'm, I'm excited that they at least included it because a lot of people, when they do consider an EV, it's new and it's kind of a sleeper part of the segment. Can you give us a little bit more of like a percentage wise of like, what is the used EV market look like in comparison to... The new yeah, cities. sure. So, so for, first of all, the overall used car market, like every year in the U.S., about 40 million cars are sold used and about 17 million cars are sold new, right? Kind of makes sense. Like a car can only be sold new once, you know, but it, but it, then definitionally it, you know, they get sold at least once used, uh, most of them. Um, and, and more often like two, three, four times, especially with these electric vehicles that are like lasting a long time, you know, so there's not, there's a lot fewer moving parts and so they're going to be on the roads for a long time. Like eventually that Tesla Model X that someone is driving today is going to be sold three or four times and to the point where it's like, maybe it's in sort of a, a ride share, you know, situation later on, like, um, in some small town in the middle of Ohio, like these cars are going to have a lot of different lives. Um, so uh, second thing is, um, is the, um, just in terms of the, the impact, um, right now, the used EV market, so overall market, tw you know, for cars uh, used is twice or more than twice new. Uh, for used electric cars, it's the other way around right now because they haven't been around for very long and new electric cars have been going up so quickly. So right now, the used market is is about a third to a half of the new market, right? So that's like a good, so it's exactly opposite, right? For combustion engine cars, twice the number of used to new. For EVs, twice the number of new to used. But as over the next 10 years, like that will um, catch up uh, in about, I think we modeled it to the end of 2025, there'll be about the same number used versus new. And then after that, there will be more new, there will be more used EVs than there are new EVs each year. Interesting. Um, so this two or uh, four thousand um, dollar credit is only for vehicles that are under twenty five thousand dollars for a used EV. So do you guys have any data as to what that means as for qualification for the used EVs that are on the market when this hits? Because if I can remember correctly, the used EV portion doesn't start until January first. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. January 1st, uh, 2023 is the first, like a car, a used car sold for under 25K that day is eligible. Do you know what the percentage of that market looks like that's under the 25,000? It's kind of interesting right now because we have a unique market over the last couple of years where the used car and the new car inventory is limited because of supply. People are holding on to their cars, but also the used market has really skyrocketed because people just need yeah. cars <laughs> it's a cra yeah, crazy crazy market the last couple of years so right now if you just take a snapshot of all the used evs that are available for sale today it's only about 17 percent of them are priced under twenty five thousand dollars now 
by January 1st, I expect that to grow somewhat because that, you know, no one was like paying attention to that threshold. And so a car that happened to be priced at 25.5 before, you know, January 1st, like there's a pretty powerful reason to price it at 24.999. So like, I think probably it creeps up to a quarter right away. And then over time, you know, this is a 10 year long program. So over time, like as there become more and more older EVs that are out there, um, there, this, there will be a much, much bigger proportion of, of vehicles that sort of fall under this, under that threshold. Yeah. So, and then the one thing it seems not clear to me, and maybe you have an answer here because you've dove so deep into this, but can this qualify only through a dealership or can people do this private party or what are the restrictions looking like? There's also some... Uh, point of sale reference in the new EV tax credit uh, yeah. for new vehicles, but does that apply here to the used? You're digging into the really gnarly parts <laughs> of the bill now. So, okay. So um, this is the, unlike um, any tax credit that we have seen aimed at the auto industry before, the used tax credit can only be applied to a dealer sold vehicle. So that's a really big change for the industry. Mm -hmm. Um if roughly speaking, about half of all used cars are sold private party today, be, there has been yeah. hasn't been really a difference there. Like you know, there's there's pros and cons to each model, but all of a sudden, like this for all EVs, which is not that many today, but over the course of the next ten years, is going to be the majority of the used car market is going to be electric. And so there's this really powerful thumb on the scale for. Uh, for a category anyway of used EVs uh, to be sold through dealerships. Um, so that'll be a big change for the industry. It's not going to impact everything because if you are selling a car above 25,000, then it doesn't make any difference. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big change. Oh, absolutely. And then um, is there any point of sale? Oh ability? yeah, that was the it other part. It has to be through the dealership. So can you get it as point of sale or is this going to be something that is similar to the previous one where it's right. uh, uh, almost like a uh, write-off or a yeah, incentive? Yeah. So this is, um, uh, here's where something, there's a component that's shared between the new and the used tax credit. So in 2023, um, the plan is for this to be a thing that you fill out a form on your taxes. And so it's not point of sale. Um, both the new and the used thing will be like mm -hmm. that. Um Starting in January 1st, 2024, the wording of the bill says that both of them will switch to a point of sale type thing. And so you will have to, and frankly, I think the government just realized, you know what, this is a big change for how this would work. And everybody's going to have to like get on board with this. And there's, I just think they realized they had no chance of implementing a program, a point of sale program within basically four months. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's why they gave themselves an extra year. Uh, but yeah, starting in January, 2024, uh, the car dealer, whether it's a new, whether they're selling the car new or used, um, will be able to uh, take a point of sale discount, $4,000 for used cars, up to $4,000 for used cars, and, uh, and, and bring the price down. And then you will end up like, um, you will not have to claim it on your taxes later. But there's going to be some really interesting like, well, what happens if you say, if you walk in a dealership and you're like, yeah, I, I'm income qualified, don't worry, I can, you know, give me the, 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 the break, uh, the price break, and then you actually turn out to not be because you are you make over the income limits. You know, maybe this is early in the year, maybe you got a raise, you didn't even know you were going to not be eligible anymore. Like, there's some real interesting questions they're going to oh, have to be yeah. uh, to work through. How is this used EV incentive going to impact the EV market on a more macro level, like on a, <laughs> a bigger scale? This is like a million dollar, a bill, well, it's called a trillion dollar question. Right? <laughs> Such a big market, you know, and um, I think that there, I, I don't think anybody knows yet. Like the one thing I would say, so I was, you know, I'm dusting off my, I was like econ major in college. So I'm dusting off some really, really, really old textbook knowledge here. <laughs> um, right now, today, right, you have a very, you mentioned earlier, you have a very supply constrained used uh, EV market, right? And in that world, like basically like no matter how much people want these cars, like it's difficult for supply to increase in the used market. 
Um, that's called, oh God, I'm going to nerd myself to death here. That's called um, having inelastic supply. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. Anyway, my econ professor would be so proud right now. <laughs> okay. What happens when you ta- when you put in a tax in that kind of a situation or a tax credit in reverse is the supplier basically like gets most of the benefit and they just continue to pass through the price, the full price through to the to the um to the buyer. So in a world where uh, where it's where supply is really limited and people want that thing, uh, the price will tend to stay the same, and uh, and and basically like the seller will get to pocket more money. Um, now, <laughs> that's actually potentially has a positive benefit, weirdly, to the original owner, because that means the original owner will be able to sell their car for more when they sell it to the dealer because the dealer is going to be able to make more. And so like, in a sense, like you could have a situation again for the first little while where the price of used EVs doesn't change all that much, but what a seller, a a seller of, of, when they get, when they, you know, sell their new EV, they can sell it for more. Um, now that will completely flip if uh, once we sort of like get to a situation where there is more supply of used EVs, um, and then in that case, like the basically the price will come down, uh, the effective price will come down. Um, but all of that is like really uh, also clouded by the fact that this is a tax credit that can only be used by some people and not others. So. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I should have just started by saying that. Like, it could be anything. Who knows? I mean, I don't think it's going to be wild. <laughs> yeah, anyone predicted what's happening right now. So, the, yeah. I mean, you're, and one thing can just completely change it. Yeah. So that's what that's right. we've been seeing, and I'm sure we'll see more of that in the future. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about the the data behind what you guys are doing because data is king. And right now, the EV usage information is pretty much held in vehicle by the manufacturers. Um, And it sounds like you guys have a really great understanding as to what's happening across brands as far as the batteries go, like the health and things like that. Um, So how will that resource affect the value of your company and your trajectory, like as a as a whole, moving forward, with having such a wide scope of visibility. Yeah, thanks. I mean, it, it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, we spent our first two years as a company just working on building up this incredible, unique data asset. You know, across uh, forty five different makes and models of cars, and we're seeing cars on the road in all fifty states and in essentially all temperature environments. That uh, insight, that set of insight. I mean, we're now, we've now seen, uh, tracked and observed over a hundred million miles from, um, tens of thousands of vehicles at this point. They're on the road in real life, like driving around in a giant laboratory experiment. Um, no one else to my knowledge has that cross sort of manufacturer, uh, viewpoint of what's going on in these cars batteries. Um, now what do we do with it? (laughs) Right. And how's it going to benefit the industry? Um, our stance is like that. That data is really important for buyers and dealers and owners because you know you just need to know. Similar to like the odometer used to be the thing that everybody could see, and you could sort of see, well, is it a high mileage car? Is it a low mileage car? Is it you know what else is going on with it? Um, and so we really feel like this is just an Im- important piece of information that should be out there for everyone. Um, now it's complicated by the fact that like. Battery chemistries are different from car to car and uh, battery packs and cells change from year to year. And there's like hundreds of different ways that, that, you know, these cars like are treated after they're shipped out of the factory. And so it's like that, it's just this really, really hard problem. And we really think that, um, that, that if we can sort of position ourselves, that we're, you know, we're essentially like the new odometer for these cars, that that's really important for the industry, for all, everybody buying or selling or owning a car. And, you know, we'll put us really at the center of, of, a, of, you know, kind of the entire used car market moving forward. Yeah. So what would you say then, then, cause I mean, that's very, a unique selling point and a lot of value brought to you and your company. So what would you say the trajectory of the company is then? Because that is a 
very unique and valuable asset. And it's like, you guys are really yeah. the only ones doing this. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. what do you think the future of your company looks like? I mean, we're 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 working on a really big and important problem for the industry, and we're like we've we have, as you pointed out, twenty people, only twenty people now working on it. Um, it's a relatively small, nascent sort of like thing right now, but it's going to be a sort of something that should be considered with every single used car purchase in the future. So, um, I, I think that that there's a lot of runway for us to grow and, and, and help sort of serve all the different actors in this industry. Um, you know, I, we just, we're just getting going really. I mean, as the industry is just getting going. So trajectory up into the right, I guess I'll, I'll say, I mean, um, <laughs> I like that. you know, and, and I'll, I'll just sort of leave it at that. As people are considering used EVs, what would you give them as advice for, deciding what to purchase i mean obviously you guys are doing the battery health but is there mm -hmm. anything else moving forward that buyers should consider when they're shopping for a used ev yeah and and let's say let's let's just think about i mean there are some elements of buying a used car that are the same right like did somebody smoke inside it did, you know does it smell gross like do you know is it dented up i mean those like those are i'm going to ignore the things that are kind of the same you know and just just talk about what the differences are um so our contention is the battery is like by far the most important thing in in these cars it's the highest cost item you know you can buy a used Ten thousand, a ten thousand dollar used Nissan Leaf, um, and if the battery goes, it's ten thousand dollars to replace the battery. So, like, you basically just bought a brick. That is never happened with a combustion engine car. So that's like why we started right there. And it's hard to measure. And the manufacturers are sort of keeping that data close to heel uh, if they even have access to it themselves. Um, so, but there are other uh, other sort of um, uh, um, things that are different. So, a couple of examples. Um, well, we talked about the first one, tax credit. Like, is a specific car eligible for a tax credit starting January 1st? Like, that's actually not all that straightforward. You have to be a qualifying by yourself, but also the car can't have gotten a tax credit on it before. So that's going to be something to really pay attention to. Um, the other one is, I'll say, like, more and more vehicle makers are shipping their cars um, with... Uh, software that can upgrade their systems later. So for instance, like Tesla's uh, autopilot, full self-drive, whatever you want to call it, um, can be bought later. And in some cases, um, there's like, you can buy a, a battery sort of capacity unlocks and that sort of thing. None of that information is um, sort of derivable through the current, uh, the way the industry looks in, and understands cars. So like, there's sort of a whole other thing of like, okay, I'm buying this car, what software comes with it? What features are unlocked? And that's, you know, I think that's not, not exclusive to EVs, but it's certainly that that's sort of like the newer way of, of thinking about this. And that's going to be important as well. For sure. And, you know, one thing to consider is that a lot of people think, oh, you know, once you're done driving your EV, it, you can't use the battery for anything. Is there any path that you guys are seeing for second life applications and monitoring like energy storage solutions and things like that? Yeah. Um, it's a small market right now, but yeah, there are some small projects that are that are happening where decommissioned EV batteries are being used for stationary energy storage. Um, it's not typically happening in the home. Like you don't want to just like rip the battery out of your old leaf and stick it in your house. Like not not safe, you know. Like, but um, but at the grid level, there are, um, there are projects I'm aware of in Puerto Rico and in California and in British Columbia where repurposed. Uh, and refurbished uh, leaf batteries and other batteries are being used for like, you know, solar here. And then you kind of, the sun shines down and then you store up the energy during the day in repurposed um, uh, EV batteries and then uh, and then discharge that in the evening. Um, so that's happening at small scale right now. And I think will be a bigger deal over time. So keeping an eye on it for now. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, can you kind of give us a synopsis of how our audience can help improve and get more involved with what you guys are doing because I think it's awesome and really no one else is doing it, as I said. So it's super important because the more EVs we can get on the road, in my opinion, the better. So Yeah, thanks. So uh, real simple, if you are an EV owner, can come to Recurrent Auto 
and um, sign up for an account and we'll track your battery for you. You get some nice little monthly reports and then uh, at the end, you're going to be able to sell it for more. If you are a dealer, you know, car dealer, and you're thinking I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about selling some used EVs and getting into this market because my customers are asking for it, you should call us and and we'll talk to you about, uh, about you know, essentially helping you buy and sell with better understanding of what you're actually buying and selling. And if you're a shopper, like you, like you should definitely not buy an electric car used without looking at a recurrent report on it um, because you don't know what you're getting. You don't want to buy that $10,000 brick. Great advice. Thanks so much, Scott, for coming on to the show today. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're looking forward to getting more involved with you guys later so that we can expand the message and get more EVs on the road, especially in the used market. And thanks so much for clarifying so much in that Inflation Reduction Act, because it's uh, really complicated. I'm sure it's still a lot to learn (laughs) as it unfolds, but we appreciate your time. Well, thank you guys so much for joining the show. And until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.